Hi there, I'm Rebecca and a really warm welcome back to my channel created by Rebecca. This week we are going to be doing a project with these gorgeous peacock feathers. Let's get started. This week's project is a bit different and there's kind of a story time attached to it. So let's get cracking, have a look at what we're going to be using and uh, I'll tell you the story as we go along. So on my table I've got my gorgeous peacock feathers. These are real peacock feathers. I've got some green sateen fabric. I've got some thread, scissors, needles, pins. I've got a little bit of kapok or um, you know, soft toy stuffing that you can buy from any sort of craft shop. These lovely bluey green pheasant feathers they've been dyed but they work really nicely with the peacock feathers I've got a couple of different sizes of those and then I have this very inexpensive hand fan which is um, a gauze which has been printed with this Japanese lady it has a wire rim which has been bound with another fabric a wooden handle and a very small strange little tassel. So the plan is to cover this with fabric and then apply the feathers in such a way that it looks very glamorous. And if at all possible I'd like to try and make this fan without using glue. I'd like to try and sew it all on. I'm going to cut a piece of fabric that is big enough to fold over the fan and I also want it wide enough that I can do a bit of gathering on it. I want the back to look as neat as the front does. So having worked out roughly what size I want, I'm just folding and pinning my fabric, double checking and then cutting it roughly out. This is leftover fabric from a particular project so I, you know, uh, I'm not being that precious with it. Now I'm popping the bit of kapok down, I use it on the front and the back of the fan and I'm sort of flattening it out so that it doesn't cause any lines. And now you can watch me spend an abominable amount of time trying to pleat this fabric. I tried pleating it as a whole piece off the fan, which seemed to be working, but then I realised it wasn't. And I wasn't prepared to fight with it like this. So then I tried putting it on the fan and seeing how it might want to pleat. Better to work with the fabric than against it. And I started pinning it and I thought I was getting somewhere. But it was just so bouncy and just... Ugh, no, it didn't want to know. And then I thought maybe I shouldn't be trying to pleat it on the straight grain. Maybe I should turn it on the diagonal and pleat it on the cross grain. And my initial experiment seemed more positive, so I proceeded to cut the corners off and turn up a little hem. Just doubled the fabric over, popped some pins in because it's so slippery this sateen. Now 
and then I gather the fabric. That looks really nice. So buoyed with confidence I continue to the end and make sure it's gathered up super tight, as tight as I can get it. And hold it really tight while I just pop in a few more stitches just to hold that firm. I'm probably a bit over the top with my thread knotting, but better safe than sorry. <laughs> and then I repeat the same thing on the other side and there we go that's it wrapped around the fan creating just like a little gathered edge along the bottom and now I'm just joining those two gathered ends together so that they go around the handle of the fan I am actually popping the needle up through the gauze of the fan just in a couple of places just to make sure it's it's all connected and now with that little cuff all secure and connected I can start looking at pleating again Ugh. Pleating. I pleated, unpleated, and repleated this a lot of times. I did not enjoy it. <laughs> uh, but eventually I got there, I was happy with it, started stitching. And I just whip stitched around the edge tucking in the hems, trimming off any really excess fabric, but it doesn't really matter, you, know, you can lose quite a lot into the, into the little pouch that I'm making here. A little bit more tucking and a little bit more stitching and we are there. So I've finally applied the fabric to this fan. Don't worry about this side, this is going to have the feathers on it and this side is going to have the pleating I think stitched in. I could try and press it in but I don't think it would hold very well and I'm wondering about maybe putting some back stitches or something to to make a sort of decorative <sighs> stitch work across there and this fabric has been horrible to work with it's so bouncy it doesn't want to sit anywhere that I want it to sewing on the straight grain was not a good plan sewing on the diagonal is not a great plan I have actually sewn it into a little cap um, but it just ugh. yeah trying to do something more fussy with it it's just beyond me There we go, I have just finished back stitching the back of my fan. So that's the bit that should be closest to me. Ladies often hung these from their belts or, or from their wrists. You know, this could turn around at any time. So it's nice to have this looking as pretty as it can. Do excuse Darcy. We're having lots of roadworks 
outside the house and it is a trial to film anything out there at the moment. I did a film about my dahlias last week on my other channel Pumpkin Becky and oh I had to edit it so heavily because the roadworks were just a nightmare and I think Darcy can hear people talking so she's shouting at them so my apologies I'm very pleased to have finished that bit of the fan now I can get on to the very decorative bit so I know some of my feathers are better than others like this one has had a cut across the eye there so I probably want to put that lower down where it's going to get overlaid by another one you know something like that so I'm just going to sort of lay them out see how I want them to be do I want them to to stagger do I want to make sure that one's going to sit in front of these ones maybe probably I'm securing a thread to the center bottom of the fan and then laying the feather on top and I'm going to start taking the thread around the feather through the fabric just picking up just a little bit of the fabric and then coming back out and going round again but moving up ever so slightly so that as we go, I am securing the entire length of the feather. And if I go carefully and I don't trap all the feathers as I go up, then the sort of little wispy bits of feather will help stop the feather slipping out from the stitches. It's time consuming, but it is worth it. And I repeat this process on all of the big peacock feathers. So, my story time. Remember a few videos ago I showed you my crown that I made for a jubilee competition in my village. I was spotted wearing my wedding dress and my crown by somebody who was organising a Tudor fair in the village for a few weeks later. It was in celebration of the field of cloth of gold because Henry VIII and his entourage travelled through our village on his way to France to meet Francis I and that was in 1520. Now they'd wanted to celebrate the anniversary of that obviously in 2020 but because of the uh, pandemic they couldn't do that so it was done this year which was the first big event that we've had since all of that happened. So the organiser of the Tudor Fair saw me and said, oh, you've got to join us. We've got um, a troop of reenactors that we've hired. They're going to come and process through the village and it's all going to be wonderful. You'd look fabulous in your dress. I'm just checking how far I want those stitches to go up because I don't want to go too far. If I do, then the feather will tend to sort of bow backwards. I can always add extra stitches later if I need to but so I don't want to go too high up each up each feather. You'll notice that they've got a kind of left bias and a right bias so it's best to sort of check all that out before you start laying them down. With my smaller feathers they all seemed to be 
leaning towards the left hand side which made laying them down on the right a little bit tricky but I got round it. I wasn't allowed to wear my crown because they already had a Catherine of Aragon so I made myself a French hood which you saw in the photograph just a little bit earlier in the video here and I tried to make sure it was quite an early style of French hood um, you know 15, 20 really French hoods were only just starting to come into fashion really the ladies were still wearing their English or gable hoods so I joined the parade and there was just the reenactors one lady from the village who was playing Catherine of Aragon and then um, myself and John the Groveler I'm pretty sure he was from the village as well I stayed back because I could tell just from the way the ladies were dressed that you know they were going to be higher up the social scale than me so I made sure I was towards the back of the group um, but actually one of the ladies was talking to me um, asked who I wanted to play play and she said well yes we're all we're all characters and it turned out that she was playing Elizabeth Boleyn and if you remember back to those videos I let you know that I am actually from the Boleyn line somehow I don't know how but our family tree was done and yes Anne Boleyn would have been in France at this point so you know, that wouldn't really be accurate and I said well actually I'd rather love to be Mary Boleyn perfect she said so for the day I was Mary Boleyn and she was my lady mother and in fact I could only spend about an hour with them on that first day but I had so much fun that I promised to go back again on the second day of the fair on the second day they had arranged for me to eat with them for lunch or high board um, which was fantastic it was all cooked on an open fire and it was amazing and so many different dishes they just worked wonders we played games I watched them do some archery and I joined in with a bit of a fun archery trick and I tried to get really immersed in it I, I was trying to use the language that they were using pick up on cues that they were giving I was trying to speak to the public in the way that they were speaking to the public and my lady mother said to me had you thought about doing this because you know you, you be very good and so it was mentioned to the barber surgeon who was actually the leader of the group by my lady mother that perhaps I could join they ask you to guest at around three events and if you enjoy it and you think you'd like to join and they enjoy you and would like you to join um, and you're a good fit with them then they would ask you or invite you to join the group uh, as a permanent player <laughs> I suppose um, company member he was accosted by two of the other noble ladies and uh, and they said we think you should ask Rebecca to to join I think she'd be really good oh yes yes really good yes yes she should join so he went through it all again and explained and then they said that they're doing an event at Hever Castle in Kent I mean that is Anne Boleyn's home it is the family home of the Boleyn family once they left Blickling Hall in Norfolk they moved down to Kent and he said yes well if you would like to guest with us at Hever Castle um, you'd be very welcome so this fan is going to be part of my ensemble for the event at Hever I'll be wearing my green and gold dress again with the, the heraldic animals on it um, I will have a black velvet hood I'm going to make some black velvet over sleeves to try and mimic the shape of the other ladies dresses a bit more because they've all had theirs made by a, a, 
a Tudor costume maker. Um, and I, I don't quite fit in because my dress is quite a different shape. But I think there's things I can do to it before before the event to just sort of make it look a little bit more in keeping. Just at the end I'm going to come in with some E6000 glue and attach that last feather to neaten up all the stuff going on behind, hide all the stitching and I'm also going to use it on a couple of the feathers which have sort of twisted and then I leave that to dry overnight. And there we go, there's my fan all finished. I'm really pleased with it, it was a little bit of a roller coaster, it took an awful lot longer than I thought it was going to, but really pleased with it, it's very robust. <laughs> I added a black ribbon to the handle just so that I can hang it from my wrist while I'm walking around. And then I've got the advantage of the neat back so if it happens to swing round it doesn't matter it will still look gorgeous from either side it's very effective which I think it's going to need to be you can also see I've just wound a little bit of black ribbon around the bit where the feathers start to come down onto the handle just to sort of neaten that up a little bit So if you happen to see me at Hever Castle on August Bank Holiday, then you will know exactly how my fan was made and that I made it all by myself. <laughs> right, that's it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, share and subscribe to me here on YouTube. And until next time, bye.